New York Giants week number 10 film review. We start with a play that was a negative play, although it will be mostly positive the rest of the video, I think, for the most part. But this was the first play of the game for the Giants. It's on offense, and Daniel Jones was sacked on this play. Now, looking back on this, and this is the, uh, you know, the hindsight thing, of course, but the out route right here for, I think this is Shepard, it was open, but you can see Jones was not looking at it, so I can't fault him for that. Top of the screen for Slayton here was covered nicely by Slay, I believe that is. So on the bottom, he could have picked up five or six yards on the bottom here, but didn't go there. Then tried to work over the middle of the field. That was covered, and then Andrew Thomas gave up too much pressure. So we'll watch from this angle. Watch the left tackle, number 78, and he gives up a lot of pressure here on like a bull rush, basically. But I think that's Derek Barnett. Uh, you see right there, that's, that's too much pressure. So Jones, I guess, could have tried to evade the pocket and got out here, but it is what it is. I mean, he tried to basically stay in the pocket and make a throw. I get it. So... Not a good play on the first play, but the Giants did score on this drive, so everything was all right. But not a good first play for Andrew Thomas. So here we go on that same drive, same series, second and 15 now after the sack. And we see this is a nice throw here by Daniel Jones. I think Jones played his best game of the year. I don't really think you can argue that. Maybe you can. Not the best game of his career statistics-wise, but honestly, the best I've seen from him this year. Very tight window throw to Slayton here and picks up a first down. So... We'll slow it down as he's about to release the ball. It would be right at this moment. So you see right here, this is an anticipation throw. This is a throw where he did have a linebacker not facing him. That benefits him right there. But one linebacker in zone coverage underneath, so that's tough. A throw that has to get through this window right here, and it's basically right on target. Hits him in stride. A great throw. And we'll see the offensive line on this play. We'll see where the ball was, actually. So we'll see what the ball placement was, I should say. So let's see. We had a play action here. Guys held their blocks pretty well. I mean, Cam Fleming, not too much. You know, some pressure on the outside there for sure. Andrew Thomas, much better. Left side, good. Uh, Nick Gates here helping Zeitler. And, yeah, a pretty good pocket, and it's a good throw. It's a, it's a tough one to make, but it's a good anticipation throw. Here's the ball. We'll see where the placement was. Hits him right basically in the face. You got to love that. So good throw by Jones. They pick up the second and 15 for a first down. So here we are on the same drive. We have two big plays here to cap off the uh, touchdown for Daniel Jones. We start here with the Wayne Gallman run. Uh, so we'll see it from the other angle, actually. You probably see a lot more from this angle. So we'll see which offensive lineman did well on this play. So here's the inside handoff to Gallman. Goes up the middle. Runs a guy over, basically. And gets tackled in the secondary. So we'll see which offensive lineman did well here. Uh, so Nick Gates holds off his man right here. Good job there. One guy pulling over here. I believe that's Tom. That's not Thomas. Who is that? Is that Lemieux, maybe? Can't even see the number. I think it is Lemieux. Yeah, so it's Lemieux right there. Going to pull to this side to help Fletcher Cox, I believe, or just take him by himself, basically. Seals off that angle. I don't know what 57 was doing here. I think Gallman just ran him over. I mean, he did. He did get help from Cam Fleming, for sure, but Gallman just flat out ran the guy over. So, awesome run by Wayne Gallman right there. He definitely... Uh, ran pretty violently in this game, to be honest with you. So here is the read option play. Daniel Jones takes it for a touchdown. Like you see this guy crashes too hard and takes it. Good blocking downfield. CJ Board, I believe that is. Good blocking there. We'll watch from this other angle. Who was blocking on the offensive line? Who was So watch this defensive end. That's the guy you got to watch, of course, on a read option. If he comes in too far, which he does, Daniel Jones keeps the ball. He has a blocker in front of him. Caden Smith blocks a guy out here. Austin Mack trying to block a guy, not in the back. I mean, you know, no, I wouldn't call that. Still, good no call by the refs. And Daniel Jones just outruns a couple guys. We know he has speed and a good block here by C.J. Board. Cannot go underestimated, and he runs it in from the first score of the game. So the Eagles were really bad on third down. I think they were 0 for, I don't know what the actual number was, but I don't think they converted a third down in this game. A third and three, their first third down, I think, of the game. And they have a play here where they try and set a pick, I believe, on James Bradbury up here. But watch how he just gets away from it and times this thing up perfectly. So I think Fulgham right here, 13, tries to set a pick right there. You see it happening. And watch Bradbury the entire time. Could the throw have been a bit sooner by Wentz? Yes. But watch the timing by Bradbury. You have to love that. Knocks the pass away. I do think Wentz was a bit late there to a uh, Rager, I think that is. So we'll watch from this angle. Probably not going to get pressure because that was a quick pass. I don't really expect you to get a sack in two seconds, but not much pressure at all. But yeah, I think Wentz, you know, might have let that ball go a bit late. I don't know why he hesitated. If he threw it right there, then yeah, you're probably going to get the first down. But we see the pump fake there, then tries to bring it back, and Bradbury was already there. So awesome play by our future Pro Bowl and maybe all pro corner. 
And back to the Giants offense now. We're going to have an Alfred Morris run here up the middle for about 10 yards. We'll see what the blocking was on this play. Elijah Penny there with a key block. Andrew Thomas got his guy on the ground. And uh, Alfred Morris has been a very pleasant surprise. I'm sure all of you know that. It doesn't have to be said. But let's see what happens. So we have Elijah Penny come down here. I think he's going to try and seal off number, is it 50 maybe? No. Yeah, it's number 50 right here. So good job there. Andrew Thomas gets a guy here. I think this is Nick Gates sealing off his guy here to create this hole. And good patience, honestly, by Alfred Morris. It wasn't like the biggest dramatic pause. It wasn't like, you know, Le'Veon Bell back on the Steelers type pause, but enough to create a hole right there. And good, uh, good vision. And tough running at the end right there by Alfred Morris. So here's the fourth and one play. We know what happens. It's a Wayne Gallman touchdown. But once again, some really good blocking. They start out everybody on the outside. This is Matt Parrott, I just realized. Wow. So they bring everybody in. And I like this. You know, throw the defense off a bit. Obviously, Matt Parrott was not going to stay out there. I mean, maybe you could have thrown out a pass to one of these guys. But still, probably not going to happen. So they bring everybody in. Very tight formation. I formation. Since Smith in motion, we have basically your guys against our guys. And who's going to win the uh, line of scrimmage? and the Giants definitely did on that play. Now, Wayne Gallman leaping five yards in the air definitely helped for sure, but we'll see right here who got the penetration, who did a good job on the offensive line. I'll slow it down. Now it's not working, of course. So let's see. I'm assuming that Shane Lemieux did a good job because that was in his direction. You could tell right there Lemieux on, I don't know if that's Cox or Jackson, whoever that is. Um, so Wayne Gallman gets it, a little hesitation. You see he's going to try and follow Elijah Penny, of course. Andrew Thomas gets enough penetration. Zeitler right here seals a guy off at the last second, but he decides I'm going over the pile, which he does for a touchdown. Good job by Wayne Gallman there to get in, and a good job by the Giants' offensive line to uh, to make nice push on that play. And actually, I didn't even bring this up. I don't think I'm going to make a video about it, but the Giants did fire their offensive line coach, Mark Colombo. I mean, I don't know what happened there. I think what I heard at least is that Joe Judge was paying a lot of attention to the offensive line in practice. I don't think Mark Colombo liked that. I think he wanted control of his own group and didn't like the fact that Joe Judge was kind of butting in on his uh, his position group. So it could have been Colombo being a bit selfish, but Joe Judge had to do what he had to do. And you know what? The Giants offensive line has been much better the past few games because Joe Judge has been helping them in practice. So as I tweeted before, if you follow me on Twitter, it seems like everything Joe Judge touches turns to gold. And the offensive line might be the uh, most recent example of that. So it is what it is. If Colombo doesn't want to be a team player, then then F him. I don't really care, honestly. So hopefully this new guy who was with the Colts back in 2018, uh, the Dolphins last year, I don't know his name, honestly, I forget, but a nice Italian name. But um, hopefully he comes in here, does a good job, and helps Andrew Thomas and these young guys develop. So here's a, a couple of plays. It wasn't like a pivotal part in the game, but when I watched I don't know if the Eagles scored on this drive. I probably should have known that. But anyway, these were plays that did not really uh, – I didn't like what I saw because when I see Richard Rodgers go off against the Giants, it's, it's like Boston Scott. I don't enjoy it because the guy's not that good. So Richard Rodgers is right here, and, yeah, no one's going to guard him. It's, it's a zone defense, of course, and – when you put Blake Martinez over here, I guess that's just part of the formation, and you leave this entire middle open, well, if the Eagles run a route over the middle, you're screwed. So that's pretty much what happened. I think they just called the wrong play at the wrong time, so I get that one. Can't really blame anybody. I mean, I think Martinez was in the right place. I don't really expect him to run all the way here if he wasn't supposed to be there, so I'm not going to blame anybody for that. Just the wrong play at the wrong time. Then the very next play, um, they leave him open again. So Richard Rodgers, I think, runs a wheel route down here. I think this is more of a James Bradbury problem. Uh, maybe you could have said it was um, Fackrell, but I think it was more of a James Bradbury problem. So it looks like the Giants are going to play um, a cover three. You know, one, two, three. Um, I think Bradbury honestly did not see Richard Rodgers come up behind him, and he kind of cheated over here to the middle with, I don't even know who that is. Is that Burt? Not Burton. Well, Trey Burton was not on the Eagles for a few years. This is uh, Dallas Goddard. So I think he sticks with Goddard a bit too tightly in zone right here. Doesn't really keep his eyes on the quarterback and kind of loses sight of Richard Rodgers. So I'd hate to blame James Bradbury, but that's the only person I can really look at for that one. So it is what it is. Uh, we'll see if we got any pressure on this play because Wentz had a decent amount of time to throw. I would assume probably not. Dexter Lawrence tried. I think Leonard Williams got in there at the end, but just a bit too late. Jabril Peppers was coming off the edge on a blitz, but they didn't get there in time. So it is what it is. But right here, you can see Leonard Williams had an open lane. He got past Kelsey. I actually want to see what Leonard Williams did here. So where is Leonard Williams? Oh, he comes around on a stunt. Okay, so he didn't really flat out beat him, but still. So they were close, but they didn't get there in time, and Rodgers back-to-back -back nice catches for him. 
So here was a third and two, and it was nearly a disastrous play, and you have to blame Matt Parrott here, and I hate to do it because I love Matt Parrott, but, you know, I have to call him out. Um, he's against Brandon Graham, I believe, right here, and he kind of hooks him, does not get any good positioning on him whatsoever, and you can see Graham nearly gets there before Jones releases the ball. If he was there like a half second earlier, that's probably a fumble. He probably hits his arm, but luckily Jones got enough to get it out to uh, Golden Tate for an incomplete pass. So that could have been bad, but we can see right here, Matt Pair doesn't really square his shoulders. You can see right here, just gets beat off the jump. You watch Andrew Thomas on the other side is a lot more, you know, shoulder square. And you can see right here, Graham already beats him on the outside. He tries to hook him with his right arm. That's not going to work. And that's, that could have been holding, honestly, but it is what it is. So yeah, not good technique there by Pair. I'm not going to let one play discourage me. I still love the kid and I want him to play more, but that could have been a bad play, but that's why the Giants did not convert on this third and two. Here is a third and 11 for the Eagles ball on the 50 and a good play by Isaac freaking Yadam of all people. So Bradbury here, I guess Yadam's up there and I don't think Yadam turned his back for this ball, but he was in good position. You see like you see number 27 doesn't turn his head for the ball ever, but the throw wasn't great. If it was a better throw and he back shouldered that pass, then yes, he probably completes it. But I'm going to give Yadam credit because we crap on him all the time. So we see the pass rush here. Uh, I think this is Pep, no, Logan Ryan on a blitz out here. And I don't think Miles Sanders saw it, honestly. So if he held on to that ball just a bit longer, it would have been a sack. But he got it off in time. No one else really got pressure on this play. Um... Who's 91? I don't know if 91 is Sheard or the other guy who got a sack. I forget, honestly, but I, you guys probably know. But um, Logan Ryan almost got there, and we'll see the positioning right here. As I said, if he threw this one back shoulder a bit, it probably could have been completed, but the ball was inside. Yadam had him cut off the whole time, and I know Yadam doesn't turn his head, but that's still not pass interference in my opinion. It's a pretty good job by Yadam. Stays with Travis Fulgham, who's been lighting the league on fire, stride for stride. And you know what? I'll give him credit where credit is due. Nice play by Isaac Yadam there. All right, so we're back to some more Daniel Jones love here. He's uh, got a third and five on his own seven. So to win the field position battle, it'd be very big to get this first down. And he does it. Um, you know, it's not like a great throw, but it's a throw that I'm a big fan of because it took a lot of accuracy and loft and precision and understanding the defense. So we see here they sent out Lewis in motion. They are in, it looks like, it looked like man at first. I don't, it looks like man, honestly. So he could have went here, of course, to Shepard, I think that is. I see a seven, but I don't know what this corner was doing, honestly. Like, he's looking at the quarterback the whole time. He has Lewis sneak in behind him, and Jones has to fit this ball in an area between the cornerback and the safety. It's a tough throw to make, honestly, and he does it very nicely over the outstretched arms of the cornerback, leaping, and gets the first down. So gets them out of the, you know, terrible field position. We see him send out Lewis in motion there. I think he was calling out protection, and we'll see what happened there. Fletcher Cox drops back in coverage don't see that every day um andrew thomas on an island out there on the left side held up pretty nicely almost got beat inside i guess at the end there but still good job held the pocket for a long enough time kevin zeitler holding up very nicely there and cam fleming not allowing much much push himself so a good job by the offensive line daniel jones fits it in perfectly good play by the giants offense so here was the long Boston Scott touchdown. Happens every time he faces the Giants. And I'm curious to see what happened on this play. How did he get such a nice hole? And, you know, there was a couple things you can point out. A very nice block there by Kelsey, of course, on Bradbury. I wasn't really a fan of the route, I guess you can call it, or the, uh, the way he pursued the ball by Blake Martinez. Now... If you're Martinez here, I don't know what benefit it takes to, you know, to go right behind Leonard Williams and B.J. Hill. He either could have gotten this backside hole or he could have went over here. I, I don't really know why Martinez was kind of just right behind Leonard Williams. I don't really know what was going on with him there. But, yeah, big hole for him, and Logan Ryan tries to cut him off. It was very close to being out of bounds but called the touchdown after the replay. So you can say good blocking on Fackrell on the outside right there. It was a good block to take out Bradbury's feet, of course, take out his legs. Uh, Leonard Williams being blocked right there. B.J. Hill wasn't really involved in the play. I want to see where David Mayo was. Uh, bit of a late reaction. Yeah, he didn't really see it, honestly, but it's David Mayo, whatever. Um, but Martinez didn't take the best pursuit to that. So it is what it is. A lot of guys made mistakes on that play, but uh, hopefully next game, they tight not next game. Well, they don't play this week, but hopefully against the Bengals and Joe Mixon and Giovanni Bernard, they don't let this stuff happen. So here was an awesome drive for the Giants. I think the Eagles just scored on this. They got a two-point conversion to make it a three-point game. The Giants had to respond here because it really felt like the Eagles were gaining the momentum back. 
The Giants scored in like four plays on this drive. It was awesome. So I think this was the Sterling Shepard catch, a back shoulder right there. Awesome play by him. It looked like man coverage, I believe it was, and the cornerback didn't really play it too well. I don't know if that's Roby Coleman. I don't know who it, who it was, honestly, but didn't play it too well. We'll see. See Shepard get outside leverage. He knows he has the back shoulder there. I think Shepard and Jones were on the same page the whole time, and luckily Shepard turned around and saw that happen. So we'll look at the offensive line here, see who did a good job. Hopefully everybody did a good job. I guess Thomas let up some push, but not too, too bad. Um, yeah, everybody else was fine. Fleming kind of got beat outside there, but the play wasn't really towards his side. I think Jones kind of slid to the left a bit. So, yeah, I mean, not not terrible. I'll take it. So, here is the Golden Tate play. This was a nice nice ball here. Give your guy a one-on-one -on -one shot. So, nobody else is really open on this play. Once again, they are in man coverage. It's a slot receiver against a slot corner here. And just gives uh, Golden Tate a chance to go and get it. But once again, you see, just like the last play, the Eagles cornerback does not even look at the ball. He's looking at Golden Tate. I think he tried to turn his head at one point, but too late for him. And Golden Tate makes a nice little uh, contested catch, which he's been good at this year, honestly. I'll give him credit. So, we'll see. Andrew Thomas did a pretty good job of kind of using... His left, not left guard, but using Nick Gates and kind of pushing him into Gates right there. So we'll take that. Buy yourself some more time. Um, who was it? If we see right here, Shane the Mew goes all the way to the right side to help out. And Wayne Goldman was there to help him as well. Seemed like everyone did a good job on that play, honestly, protection-wise. And Jones, you can see right here, pump fake to the left. Might have thrown a safety off. There was a safety. I'm trying to think if there was. There actually was a safety. I didn't even point that one out. But Jones, I mean, he looked like he was going to go with Ingram anyway. So, I mean, I don't know I don't know how much that did, honestly. But uh, he had the whole right side open. And, yeah, it was a good throw. And we'll see from this angle right here to see what Golden Tate did. Did he push off? Probably not. I mean, no, I don't think so. So good catch by Tate and a good throw, good decision by Daniel Jones. So here we have a negative and a positive play. So we have the Darius Slayton drop on third and four, which I just think was a concentration thing, honestly, because they had the right play. Nobody was covering him, and he just flat out dropped the ball. So we'll watch here what happens. Um, he honestly had Shepard open too, but yeah, that's, that's one you have to catch. That there's not really much I can say about this one. There's really nothing to break down there. Um, we'll look at the offensive line to see what they did on this particular play, and everything looked pretty good except for Matt Parrott. He kind of you know let up some pressure to Graham, but Daniel Jones hung in there. He saw his guy open, and here's here's Slayton, here's Shepard. Both guys are just open. Like, nobody's on both, either of these guys right here. So you could have thrown it here. You could have thrown it here. He gives Slayton the chance, and it's one that you absolutely – there's no excuses. You have to catch that ball one way, one how, or some way, somehow you have to. I mean, it's in both his hands. Was it a bit outstretched? Sure, but I'm not going to make excuses for that one. I'm, I'm sure Slayton knows he has to catch that ball. So on to the positive play. We have a sack right here. For Trent Harris. I don't know who Trent Harris is. I honestly have no idea. But he gets the sack here. Now, once again, you can see that there was a low snap right here by Kelsey, who had a rough game with snapping the ball in this one. I don't know if the play was to fake a throw out here and go somewhere else. He probably had Fulgham, honestly. But it was too low of a um, too low of a snap, and Harris got in there pretty easily. So where is Trent Harris, and who is Trent Harris? That's the real question. But where is Trent Harris on this play? I don't know where he is. We'll find out when he sacks the quarterback. But... I don't think this is him. That's Dexter Lawrence. Oh, he's right here. Okay, so I was looking for him. So he's right here. I don't know what number that is. Is it a fi not 53? That's uh, that's O'Shane's number. But, yeah, he does a good job not 93. He does a good job of not missing that tackle. And Trent Harris, you are known as a good player now in my book. I'm just kidding. But nice play by him. Um, you can say maybe he went low on the quarterback. I'm glad they didn't call that nonsense. But Jabril Pepper's there the, to help as well. And a good job by the Giants defense on that play. So here's a play that probably could have put the game away. I know there was 9 minutes, 20 seconds left, but this could have put the Giants up 28-17. And I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. It's the Andrew Thomas holding play that does not show up in the stat sheet for Daniel Jones, but he should have had another rushing touchdown in this game. Similar to the first one, honestly, just the read option. I looked like a more designed play, honestly, but Jones was not even touched. But they called a holding penalty on Andrew Thomas. So let's put on the ref cap here, I guess you can call it, and see if this actually was holding. Um, I didn't go to referee school, but let's see. Let's see. So Andrew Thomas is right here. I mean, or maybe. Okay, I see where they're coming from. So I think this guy was trying to release. Thomas was not letting him go, and they call holding. I, I get it. 
it's funny, I had a fist bump and then the flag came in in the back. But I see where they're coming from here because, you know, when a player that you're blocking is trying to disengage from you, where is Thomas? I lost him. Oh, right here. When your guy is trying to disengage, which right around here he is, right? He's trying to disengage. Thomas is not in front of his guy. So he, this guy on the Eagles is trying to go this way towards the ball, right? Andrew Thomas is flat out holding him. He's not letting him disengage, and that's why the ref, it wasn't, you know, it was for a split second, but that's enough for the refs to think that impacted the play enough to call a holding penalty. So... It's not the most egregious hold, but I also don't blame the refs for throwing the flag. If it happened to a Giants player and Carson Wentz is running in, I would want that flag as well. So I get it. Rookie mistake, I guess we'll call it. Hopefully that one does not happen again in the future because a touchdown there would have been nice. All right, so two last plays here, some really big plays in the final minutes here. Four minutes to go, and this was the 40-yard catch for Darius Slayton. So one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, man coverage here, man coverage here, one safety high. He has to pick one side. He doesn't really pick a side, honestly. He just stays in the middle. And Jones sees Darius Slayton with his uh, guy's back turn. I think that is Darius Slay. So Slayton gets the best of him right there. And you got to love that. That's awesome right there. That's that's not like the uh, the most great ball placement of all time. He probably could have let him, let him inside and, and a bit more out in front. But still, the throw got there, and Slayton's concentration was unbelievable. You know, it really was. So, as I said, it wasn't the most perfect throw. I don't expect Daniel Jones' deep accuracy to be perfect at this point. It kind of is what it is, but does a lot of other things well. So, they do uh, a nice play action here. I'm sure that got some people to bite. That definitely would fool me for sure, but that's why I don't play linebacker in the NFL. But these guys might have been fooled here. Um, tried to back up in coverage, and Jones got hit as he threw. I want to see what the offensive line did on this play. Um, I guess Thomas did let his guy cave in a bit right here. Barnett, I think, once again, got inside a bit, and Jones took a hit right here on his knee. Thank God he's all right. But, um, yeah, Slayton, right? a really nice job to adjust to that ball and make a catch, and, and shout out to Jones for giving him a ball he can go and get and giving him that one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So I like what I saw there. Way to make up for the drop by Slayton. So here was the play with 252 left that I think ultimately put the game away. A third and 10 for the Eagles offense. They were down by 10 points at this point. So the game was pretty much over. So here we go. It was the Dexter Lawrence sack. Lawrence is right here if you want to watch him. But I'm going to watch the coverage and see what happened. It's man coverage. Um, nobody looked open except for this guy right here who's going to break for uh, the corner. And... He would have been open. I mean, there is a safety up here, but a well-placed ball somewhere out there and away from this safety probably could have been completed. But then there was another route here. So I don't know. Very tight throw to make. But nobody was really glaringly open. There was a guy for a check down. I don't know if that's Goddard, whoever that is. That's That was open. But yeah, uh, the Giants defensive line and pass rush got there very quickly. We'll see what happens. So where is Lawrence? He's right here against, that is Kelsey, actually, who definitely struggled in this game. So Kelsey gets beat. And we see Fackrell right here. He almost gets there as well, coming around from the left side on a stunt. And Leonard Williams was there for a sack as well. So I don't think they gave it to Williams. I think they gave it to Lawrence. Where is Lawrence? He's right here. I want to see exactly who got him. I think it was mostly Lawrence. And I think Williams came in there for the cleanup. But, yeah, I mean, this was pretty much the game ceiling play in my mind. The Giants played pretty well in this game i would take a 10 win a 10 point win over the i would take a 10 win season but a 10 point win over the eagles any day so uh very happy the giants got this one done it's the first time since 2016 so a long time coming but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this video um leave in the comments if you enjoyed and i'll talk to you guys next time